What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new, welcome. My name is Becca. I am a registered dietitian, personal trainer, and a first time mama of a beautiful 15 month old. And my channel is all about fitness tips, nutrition advice, and a little bit of motherhood and life sprinkled in. So if you're interested in following my weight loss journey and learning a little bit more to help you with your journey as well, then make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos. In this video today, I'm going to be answering your guys' questions that I had asked on my Facebook and my Instagram. If you're not already following me on Facebook and Instagram, make sure you do that because I post daily fitness inspiration tips and more so you don't want to miss out on that love watching other q a videos and i thought why not try it for my channel and see how it goes and if you guys like this kind of content then i can keep it coming without further ado let's get to the cues the first question is do you and your husband take turns working out so actually no the only time he can really fit in workouts is in the morning before violet wakes up and we really don't have to switch off for that we have our own gym at home he does his workouts in our gym so we really don't have to switch off we could work out at the same times we work out at different times as long as it's before violet wakes up or whatever so no we never really have to switch off which i'm very thankful for so we can sabotage how do you avoid it all right this is a question i get a lot it's like how do i just not blow off everything on the weekends is you got to stick to your routines and habits that you've made throughout the week a lot of times people will eat perfectly and do all the things right on the week but then go off the rails on the weekend but you have to stay true to your calorie deficit and you got to stay true to your routines on the weekends if you want to go out with your friends if you want to do stuff like that you absolutely can but just focus on the weekly calorie average if weight loss is your goal track even if you don't want to track what you're doing on the weekends track even if you go off plan because it's so good to have that information focus on the big picture when it comes to the weekends and stay on track with those routines and habits that you've built over the week something you can also do if you find that you want to have a little bit more flexibility on the weekends is you can have a calorie range i like offering a range of like 2000 to 2200 calories so you could be on the lower range during the week and you could be on the higher range on the weekend to kind of help average things out so that's going to be my best suggestion there and just thinking focus on the basics i always say when it comes to having fun pick what is worth it to you what is the worth it things is mimosa at brunch worth it have some mimosas track it move on are donuts, cinnamon rolls, whatever your favorite things are, are those the worth it items? Pick the one thing that you know is worth it, fit that in, and then ditch the things that aren't. How tall are you? Great job on the weight loss so far. Thank you. I am 5'6". I'm pretty average, so that's my height. And then the next question is, what does your husband do for a living? So my husband is... He's done a lot of things, but he's kind of got an accounting finance background. So he does a lot of that and works with the CFO really closely at the company. What is your favorite lift? Deadlift, squat, press, etc. cetera. Huh. I really like sumo deadlifts. I love regular deadlifts because I feel really strong when I do those. And I feel like such a badass, you know what I'm saying? Like lifting heavy and deadlifts. I think deadlifts for sure. Squats truly are not my favorite. I find squats are very awkward and I don't know. Ever since I had Violet, I feel like my squats have just not been right. So they aren't that great. But I love hip thrusts, working the glutes, and I love sumo deadlifts. Those are my favorites. And what is your all-time favorite food? Probably Oreos. <laughs> I am a sweet gal through and through. So for me to be successful in my weight loss, I need to implement things I love. So that's going to be Oreos, candy, things like that. Obviously, that's not an everyday thing. I'm not eating Oreos and candy all the time. But I do fit it in with within. Uh, I do fit that in within portion size. But I do... I would say it would have to be like Oreos or something because I really like this. But if it's like a food food, I really love to go eat ramen, like fancy ramen, not like the cheap ramen, even though that's pretty good too. I love going to like a ramen bar or something like that to get a little date night out. You know what I'm saying? I love that. I'm just curious about underwear and going to the gym. Is it a preference to wear a thong, 
Sorry if this is a weird question. It is not a weird question, girlfriend. This is something that's kind of taboo, but I'm gonna be honest, is I go commando. It just never worked out for me. I don't like it, it's uncomfortable, so I just am a commando girly. How do you meet your protein goals when you eat mostly plant-based without tons of protein powder? So this is a good question, and I hope to do a little bit more content on this, but best ways to do that is think about the big vegetarian proteins. They're gonna be your tofu, your tempeh, edamame, your soy proteins are really awesome high quality proteins. Eggs, yogurt, cottage cheese are also great options. You could just eat more of those. Your beans, legumes, lentils, and then your whole grains that are gonna be higher in protein options right there. And you just gotta get really creative and you're gonna need to eat more volume of those items, especially if you're following a plant-based, vegetarian or vegan diet. Are you going to be having more kids slash do you want more kids? Yes, I want, me and Michael both want one more. I think I could commit to one more kid. Look, <laughs> I struggled with postpartum depression severely when I had Violet. I gained a lot of weight postpartum as well. And it just, it was a struggle. Like pregnancy was hard for me. Postpartum was hard for me. Gaining weight was hard for me. So that was just a lot of, you know, I just didn't love that. So I told Michael, I could do this one more time because we want Violet to have a sibling and I think that is it. Can you do more what you eat in a days and post that? Of course, I am happy to do more what I eat in a days. If you like those kind of videos, please let me know in the comments if you wanna see more of those. I can definitely do those. Any tips on conquering binge eating? So binge eating can be pretty complex depending on the trigger, like why you're having binge eating. If it's a mental, um, psychological thing you will need to seek help with a qualified therapist and psychiatrist to help manage that but if you're binge eating because you're trying to restrict your food too much then that's where we need to get down into the problem so if you're binge eating because when you're trying to lose weight it's because you're trying to restrict too much at once so Yes, we need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight, but you don't wanna be in too big of a deficit. Making sure you're eating enough protein, making sure you're fitting in the foods you love and not restricting yourself because the more we restrict, the more we want those foods, the more likely we are going to binge. So less restriction and more adding into our diet of things we need, that should be more helpful in preventing that binge. And then also pairing your, your proteins with your carbs, making sure that you're balancing your blood sugar. Those are all things that can help with binge eating. How much have you lost in the program? Was it more inches? Do you mind me asking your age? I do not mind. So I am 29, I will be turning 30 in May. Since the beginning of the year, I have so far lost about eight pounds with that, and I'm still going strong. The Me360 app, so this is how I'm measuring my progress. I don't know how accurate it is, but you know what? We're we're going with it. All right. So I've dropped two percent body fat in about two months, which is excellent. Only about three or four inches lost and two percent body fat in the last two months, which I'm really thrilled. And I have gained half a pound of lean body mass, which is also awesome. How do you stay motivated? And I feel like this is the biggest question I get all the time is how do you stay motivated? How do you do everything? And honestly, I'm gonna give it to you straight is that I'm not freaking motivated. You have to be disciplined. You have to make decisions. You cannot rely on motivation to get you to the gym. You cannot rely on motivation to get you meal prepping and tracking your food. You cannot rely on motivation to do anything in life. Okay, motivation like gets the ball rolling and gets you started. Discipline and making choices and consistency is what's gonna keep you going, all right? For me, it's about setting the routine. It's the habits that I built. Now that like exercise is a part of my life. It's what I do, it's not I have to be motivated for it. I know when I wake up, I get my workout in, I go on with my day. I know I wake up, get Violet up, head to the gym at eight. It is the routine has been in place. It's now a habit for me, and it would be weird if I didn't work out. Okay, so if I'm trying to tone, should I be eating in a deficit or a surplus to do that? Okay, so if you're trying to tone, tone is actually building muscle, so it kinda depends. It's a hard question because if you've been lifting for a long time and you're wanting to build more muscle tone, then you would need to eat in a surplus. 
If you're brand new to the gym, you're like, I want to lose fat and I want to tone up, then you would need to eat in a maintenance slash a small, a small calorie deficit to recomp. Recomp is when you build muscle and lose fat at the same time, but it is a very hard thing to do, especially if you're someone who's been lifting for a while. It doesn't happen so easily. If you're brand new to the gym, there's this thing called newbie gains and you got to optimize that and you lift heavy, you eat at maintenance, a small deficit, and you will build muscle and tone up. But it just all depends on like what your background is and where everything is. So I would recommend maybe maintenance slash a slight deficit in lifting heavy, high protein, and you will get that muscle tone that you're looking for, but you have to stay consistent. Jessica asks, what is your start weight, goal weight, and current weight? I'm gonna just start postpartum, okay? I'm gonna start with postpartum because that's kind of where most of the people have started following my journey. So I gave birth at 207. I was 207 pounds when I gave birth, and pre-baby, I was a lean 160. 160 was perfect for me i was toned lean whatever right now currently today i am 185 so from post from birth to now i've lost 20 pounds and from the beginning of like my postpartum journey because like you lose some fluid and weight from just having a baby i kind of started around 200 pounds my goal is like 160 to 170. That's kind of like my big goal before I want to get pregnant again. But really, it just depends because I want to build muscle. I'm trying to lean out and it can look really different. So ideally 160 to 170. That's my goal. So that is actually like another 20 pounds, which is that sounds like a lot, but that's what it is. Snack ideas with high protein. So some of my go-tos are gonna be pumpkin seeds, cheese sticks, edamame, really great options, yogurts. Greek yogurt is a go-to. I love Greek yogurt, hard-boiled eggs. Protein bars are awesome. I love to make those protein waffles with the Kodiak cakes. Those are awesome for snacks. I'll like whip up a couple of those, add in protein powder if I wanna bump it up even more. Those are awesome. Even chia pudding overnight oats, you can make like a high protein snack size version of those. And think about it, like snacks can just be smaller versions of things that you eat. You could get really creative with this. Um, some other things that I really like to do, sometimes I'll have a protein coffee for a snack if I'm feeling like I need a little pick me up. And then of course you have like cottage cheese, you can make energy balls, you could do all kinds of stuff there or make like little protein things. Those are some of my go-tos. Madison asks, what is the best way to get veggies in? Hide them in things. When I cook ground meat, I'm always adding rice cauliflower to it because you can't taste it. So that's like a simple way. If you're making pasta sauce, blend in some spinach. If you're making a smoothie, add in some leafy greens, some cauliflower. If you're wanting to cook like a protein, you can make a sheet pan and add tons of veggies to it, like broccoli, cauliflower. You could add multiple veggies in one meal. There's so many ways that you could do it. You could do canned vegetables. You could do frozen veggies. You could do fresh veggies. There's no right or wrong. They're all nutritious and just sneak them into things. So for snacks, you can make like a Greek yogurt ranch dip, you know, get your Greek yogurt, add some ranch seasoning to that, add some carrots or celery on the side, make a big salad as a side dish with lots of veggies in there. There's so many ways that you could increase your veggie intake. That is fun and delicious, trying out different ways to cook them in the air fryer, roasting them, adding different sauces. And I mean, even with your foods that you love, like mac and cheese, you can totally cut up and add broccoli to that. There's an unlimited way of adding veggies to your meals. Do you do WW points? No, I've never done WW. I don't even really know how it works, to be honest. I've never been a big advocate for it. I'm not huge on a point system. I like to just do protein and calories in sort of a loose macro tracking because that is going to be the most accurate and in my opinion, more sustainable. Okay. So I got a question about creatine and what is it and should women be taking it? So creatine is an amino acid that is already naturally stored in our muscles and in our brain. And most times you see people take it or like the bodybuilders, people are trying to get jacked because it is a muscle building supplement. It helps aid in muscle recovery and it helps aid in building lean muscle. And the reason why I recommend that women take it is because the more muscle that we have in our bodies, which believe me, women, you will not get bulky, okay? Building lean muscle is what is gonna help with our metabolism. When you start adding creatine in your diet, when you're actively working out, it's not gonna only help with that building lean muscle, giving you that toned, 
physique. It is also going to help with mental clarity, helps with power, stamina, and will help you push through your workouts. And the better you work out, the better results you're going to get. Marianne said, I need to know more about the Nespresso machine. Is it worth it? Does it replace a shoppy, a coffee shop addiction? I personally use my Nespresso every single day and I make my protein lattes and they taste so much better than Starbucks and I'm getting protein and low sugar and hitting my goals. For me, the Nespresso is 1 million times worth it because I never get coffee out. How can I stay consistent on my monthly cycle when I want to eat everything in sight? Girlfriend, I feel you. So women, you need to understand that during our, our time of month, our energy needs are a little bit higher. We need more calories. So if you need to, if you find that you're really struggling with being in a deficit, it's okay to take a week of maintenance if you need to. Our bodies need more fuel. We're not as we don't feel as good so if you need to up your calories for a week of maintenance that is totally okay or even just up your calories by a hundred just to feel a little bit more in control but focus on the basics protein at every meal high fiber carbohydrates pairing your carbs i know it's easier said than done because during that time like we get crazy especially i do but really focus on maybe maintenance week and get right back into the deficit when you're done how do you feel about fasted workouts so i Fasted workouts don't burn more fat necessarily. It just, it all evens out at the end of the day. So fasted workouts feel good for you and you like them great. For me, if I work out fasted, I don't have enough energy to really push myself in my workouts. I like to eat like a banana or with my pre-workout to kind of give me some energy to push because if I would have gone into my workout fasted, I wouldn't have been able to lift as heavy. I wouldn't have been able to push myself as hard, therefore not burning as many calories and not getting the proper results that I'm looking for. But if fasted workouts work for you and you like them and it you're sustainable or whatever, great. But in general, there's no extra benefit to fasted workouts, I am going to err on the side of you probably need a little bit of fuel beforehand. Can you suggest a lifting breakdown of three to five days, what to work and when to rest? So there's different ways that you could break down how, what your lifts are and there's different splits. If you're wanting to do like three days a week, you could do upper body, lower body, total body. You could do total body, total body, total body if you wanted to. I really like body weight splits where it's like back and biceps, or a push day, a pull day being like chest and triceps, and then one to two leg days a week. That's something that I really like to do. When I was doing the Powerful You program, there was back and biceps, no, back and shoulders with a little bit of biceps. There was a chest and triceps workout, and then there was a leg day. And I really liked that split because it broke it down where I could really burn out those specific muscle groups, but it really just depends on what your goals are and how often you're going. Like say you're doing five days, I would probably have two leg days for sure. A leg day that's like glute and hamstring focus and then another leg day that's more quad focus with a little bit of glutes depending on like if you want to build those glutes or not. And then you can have an chest and triceps, back and biceps, and then like a shoulders and abs day. And you can, you can even do them kind of like back to back like legs on Monday, upper body Tuesday. You could do like a rest day on Wednesday being like light cardio. You could do Thursday being like back and shoulders. You know, you can you could spread it out pretty nicely, um, but I do not recommend lifting more than five days a week, especially if you're not training for a bodybuilding competition or anything like that. But you always want to have at least one rest day in per week, sometimes even two. I like to do one active recovery, which is more like yoga, walking and like a true rest day. Um, like on Sundays where I just don't do anything because your body really does need that rest. Cindy asked, what do you suggest for someone starting over in their health journey? Also exercise is tough, need ideas. I recommend starting out with just tracking your food for a week or two, just to see where your baseline is. You could do a macro check in my membership group. You can go do a calculator and get a starting point and just start tracking accurately as much as you can. And then you'll start to notice where your baseline is. And then you can go into a deficit if weight loss is your goal. In regards to exercise, if it's very overwhelming, I highly recommend just walking at the beginning and then slowly adding in resistance training exercises at least one to three times a week as a beginner. You can find YouTube videos, you could do things like that, but really just take it one step at a time, build on it as you go and keep building the habits 
and you will be successful over time. That is all the questions that I got. Thank you to everyone who submitted a question. I thought this was so fun. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely let me know and we could do a Q&A maybe next month, maybe a Q&A a month. I don't know. What, what do people like? Before we close out, if you're not subscribing, what are you doing? Get on there, subscribe. And if you don't want to miss any videos, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any fit tips, nutrition tips for lifestyle, hot mom glow up tips with me. Let's keep going, you guys. Keep going strong in your journey. We're in this together.